My name is Kate Hunt. I'm a diabetes consultant from King's College Hospital in South London. Uh, today we're going to talk about starting real-time continuous glucose monitoring in pregnancy. Uh, my disclosures are here. The objectives of this topic is for you to understand the aim of using real-time CGM in pregnancy, the information provided by the real-time CGM, how to calibrate real-time CGM systems for those that need it, and when you'll need to do finger stick glucose checking and when you need to look at real-time CGM readings. The aim of using real-time CGM in pregnancy is to improve the outcomes for your baby and we want to do this by helping you uh, reach at least 70% time in target range as early as possible in your pregnancy and then maintain it through the rest of pregnancy. The real-time CGM does provide a lot of information and it can result in people overreacting to the sensor readings which can cause more problems and we want to give you strategies to deal with this. It's common when you first start using real-time CGM to, ha to be out of target for 50% of time or even more and every 5% of time in range uh, improves outcomes. So the CGM system gives you information on glucose levels and the direction of change of glucose and gives you a graph on where your glucose has been in the last 3, 6, 12 or 24 hours. So the sensor m measures glucose in the fluid just below the skin, so it's different from finger stick glucose which measures uh, glucose in blood and it lags about five to ten minutes behind your finger stick glucose. And so the finger stick glucose may be different from the sensor glucose. And if the two are different, you should regard the finger stick glucose as being accurate. What do the arrows mean? The arrows that you see will depend on which system you're using, which may be the Dexcom G6, the ManyMed 640G or the Freestyle Libra. And what the arrows are telling you is where your glucose has been over the last 20 minutes and if nothing changes what is likely to happen over the next 20 to 30 minutes. So if you've got a, a horizontal arrow or no arrow in the Minimed system your glucose is stable or changing slowly and it will take at least 20 minutes for your glucose to change by one millimole per litre. If you've got an oblique arrow in the Dexcom system or the Libra um, or a down arrow in the Minimed 640G, your glucose is falling and it will take on average 15 minutes for your glucose to fall by one millimole per litre. If you've got a down arrow on the Dexcom or the Libra or two down arrows in the Minimed system, your glucose is falling quickly and it will take on average seven minutes for your glucose to fall by one millimole per litre. Two of the systems will also show you when your glucose is falling very quickly and then it will fall by one millimole per litre over less than five minutes. So similarly if you've got up arrows, if you've got oblique up arrows in the Dextrom or the Libra or an up arrow on the Minimed 640, your glucose is rising it will go up by uh, one millimole per litre over the next 15 minutes or so. If your glucose is rising quickly, it will go up by, an av uh, by one millimole per litre over the next seven minutes or so. And if it's going up very quickly, up by one millimole per litre over less than the next five minutes. So moving on to calibration. Some CGM systems need calibration and some don't. So if your system doesn't need calibration, you can skip this bit. So calibration means doing a finger stick glucose and then putting the number into the CGM so it resets itself. And it's really important to get the calibration process correct, otherwise the sensor glucose reading will not be accurate. So there are some tips for calibration. It's really important to make sure your hands are clean and don't use sites other than your fingers to get the, the capillary blood glucose. Calibrate when your glucose levels are stable, and this means uh, before meals or before bed, when the arrows show that your glucose is stable, so no up or down arrows, and not after hypoglycemia, exercise, or within three hours of a bolus, either a correction or a meal, because your glucose will be going up or down. 
you need to calibrate when your finger stick and sensor glucose is similar within three millimoles per liter. And this may seem counterintuitive, but this is because if one, if they're not within three millimoles per liter, likely one or the other is inaccurate and it will introduce more error into the system. For systems that need calibration every 12 hours, it is really important to make sure you calibrate in the evening um, because otherwise the system will wake you up in the middle of the night to, to calibrate. So essentially calibrating during the day every time these criteria are met. When you're using the real-time CGM system, you will still need to check finger stick glucose um, because of sensor lag or inaccuracy. And there are some times when you always need to check finger stick glucose, and this is the same for people who aren't pregnant. So you need to check to confirm hypoglycemia and to monitor recovery from hypos. You need to check if your symptoms don't match the sensor glucose. For example, if you feel hypoglycemic and the sensor glucose is within range. If the sensor glucose reading seems unlikely in the circumstances. If you need to check for calibration. If the sensor reading is unreliable, for example, if there's no reading. You need to check finger stick during and after exercise and when you're following sick day rules or managing unexplained hyperglycemia. And also, if you ha are in hospital and on intravenous insulin, you will need to have finger stick glucose checked to guide the intravenous insulin treatment. So this is the same outside as outside of pregnancy, but in pregnancy, there are some extra times when you need to check finger stick glucose. And we would advise that you check your uh, finger stick glucose before each meal, because this guides how much insulin you give and before you take action to avoid hypoglycemia and before you take action to treat to correct high glucose levels and this advice may be different from outside of pregnancy and um, we would say applies to all real-time CGM systems in pregnancy because of the very tight glucose levels that we're aiming for in pregnancy but some people, as they become more familiar with the real-time CGM systems, may be able to uh, choose when not to do finger stick readings when they are confident that the sensor is working well. So in pregnancy, we would advise you to look at uh, the real-time CGM readings when you get up in the morning, when we uh, um, are aiming for glucose levels between 4 and 5.3 before you eat, again with a target of 4 to 5.3, and at that time we would also advise you to do finger stick readings. One hour after you eat, when the target is 4 to 7.8. Two hours after you eat, when the target is 4 to 6.4. Before you go to bed at night, and also if you wake up in the night for any reason. So I hope you've enjoyed this topic, and that you now understand the aim of using real-time CGM in pregnancy, the information provided by real-time CGM, how to calibrate the systems if they need it, when to do finger stick glucose, and when to look at real-time CGM readings.